Good afternoon, my friends. This is Paul from the future, and I just want to say before we begin that this is one of the most annoying reviews I've ever had to do on the history of my channel. When I first reviewed Mario Tennis Aces, I had the ability to capture footage, and I had fully intended to make it a footage review, but one, there there was still the Nintendo Creators program to deal with back then. Two, I sent the game back to Gamefly a bit early, so I finally said, enough is enough. Now that all the updates have come out, I want to give it another shot. So I did. I rented it again. I captured all new footage. I even recorded footage of the new characters to show off you guys. But then I had technical difficulties that made it so that I couldn't get the footage that I wanted. And then when I finally did finish editing it, then there was an error. And overall, it was just a huge mess. So I really hope you guys enjoy this one because... This was like about two or three years in the making, and it was so annoying. Here's hoping that if I ever review another Mario sports game, such as the upcoming Mario Golf Super Rush, it can be a lot less painful. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the review, and it was in my old house, so I hope you'll forgive a lot of the <laughs> sneezing and clearing of the throat, because man, that place was a, a terrible place for allergies. Good morning, my friends. This is Paul. And today I'm going to be re-reviewing Mario Tennis Aces for the Nintendo Switch, this time with video footage. Because the last time I reviewed the game, I was still dealing with the Nintendo Creators program, and also my capture card was on the fritz. Now that neither of which are a problem, I can actually do this the way I originally wanted to. Now, Mario Tennis Aces may seem like just another Mario Tennis game at first, but it actually introduces a nice risk-reward system that makes it so that players have a chance of catching up after a major defeat, but it also makes it so that unlike the super overpowered power shots that were introduced in Mario Power Tennis, now you actually have to have skill and timing in order to properly execute these super moves. So the first of which is an offensive shot where you have to step inside of one of the star zones. And if you hold down the ZR button, then you can jump into the air and aim the ball in slow motion. Now this isn't always guaranteed to succeed, unlike the power shots because you actually have to aim the ball so that one, you don't shoot it out of bounds and it actually bounces off the court first, and also because your opponents have the ability to block the shots if they're skillful enough. Now this is where the defensive aspect comes in, as you can also use your energy meter to make your character walk in slow motion so that they can approach the ball with a lot more speed. However, if you're trying to block an offensive shot, you have to time your swing exactly right because otherwise the racket will take damage and if it takes too much damage, then it will break and your opponents will get a KO on you. Now, once you get the timing successful, then the sound effects used are ridiculously satisfying. Although, it's also really satisfying when you KO an opponent's racket because it kind of sounds like hitting an opponent with the home run bat in the original N64 Super Smash Brothers. Besides that, this is pretty much just Mario Tennis Ultra Smashes, but if it wasn't rushed. Uh, the courts have a couple of gimmicks, which is really nice because there was only like one court in Ultra Smash, but you can turn them off. And they're not nearly as overbearing as some of the ones in the other Mario Tennis games. Also, instead of over-relying on Mario's other GameCube experiences like Power Tennis did, these are actually based on the story mode, and so they have a lot more originality and creativity behind them. Though the catch is that you have to unlock them through the adventure mode. Now, I, I guess I shouldn't put it off anymore. Let's talk about the different modes in this game. So, one of the biggest new modes is the Adventure Mode, which isn't new for the Mario Tennis series. That's been around since Mario Tennis on the Game Boy Color. But this time, rather than controlling a self-insert protagonist and slowly getting better at tennis through a university, 
Now you actually control Mario and face off against other Mushroom Kingdom citizens. While it may not be as original as those original entries, it still feels more like a Mario story as opposed to a story that takes place in the Mario universe. So one of the downsides of this mode is that you only control Mario, but since Mario is the most well-rounded character, most of the time this shouldn't be a problem. You move around on a top-down world map, and Toad is basically Mario's stand-in character, because of course he can't talk. And you'll challenge various opponents and obstacles as a way of having a mission structure. And as you progress in these missions, Mario will gain experience points and new rackets that increase his abilities. Although I didn't see too much of a difference as I went along, because it just seemed like rather than actually getting experience points, I was just getting better. That being said, it is really cool to see the new racket designs as you progress, and it also makes it harder for your opponents to KO you because Mario can just use one of his reserve rackets from earlier. Now these missions are really creative. Instead of just another round of tennis against another Mario NPC, you usually have special missions that you can't find anywhere else in the game, such as trying to aim your shots in slow motion at a bunch of piranha plants, or you've got a boss like Petey Piranha where he shoots windstorms at you, and this is where you practice your defensive maneuvers to leap over the cyclones. These missions never got old, and I guess it gave you an incentive to play adventure mode, because not only were they fun, but they also taught you the fundamentals of tennis. I don't think I would have been as good at doing power shots and perfect blocks if I hadn't have played the adventure mode. And the final battle is just absolutely exhilarating with a fantastic remix of Bowser's battle music from Super Mario 64, as this game doesn't have a whole lot of legacy tunes, but at least they had that one. Now the one downside to adventure mode is that some of these missions can be really, really hard. Now they try to offset this in two ways. One, you still get experience points even if you lose. So you feel like when you try again, you're actually better. Although this may be less due to experience and more due to just simply try, try again. They also give you the ability to challenge a mission with all-out energy if you keep failing too much. Now, I didn't test this because I'm generally not the biggest fan of Nintendo Super Guides, but I do think this is neat for some of the missions such as one of those mirror puzzles where you actually have to do puzzle solving in a tennis game. But, that being said, most of the missions seem like if you just persevere enough then you'll eventually get the hang of it. And overall, I liked Adventure Mode, but I do think it was way too short. If you don't count all of the attempts that I took beating some of the harder missions, then this was over so quickly that it's one of those, oh, over already, huh? Now there's a couple of other modes besides the Adventure Mode to make up for its short length, but these are even shorter than the amount of time I spent in the adventure mode. There's ring shot, where you have a bunch of rings on the battlefield, or tennis court, and you have to hit the ball through them as much as possible. There's also a Yoshi's ring shot option, where all of the opponents are Yoshi's, which is weird and very annoying. And this mode wasn't even new to Tennis Aces. This has been around since Mario Tennis 64. You can also play with a giant ball if you really prefer Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. And there's also a mode where you can swing the tennis racket with the Joy-Cons where your character stands in place so you don't have to worry about movement Wii Sports style. Unfortunately, it's nowhere near as amazing as Wii Sports, as the Joy-Con doesn't use an IR sensor, but instead it uses a gyroscope, which means that either my TV was set up really poorly, or I just could not get them to work as I wanted, with oftentimes the swings being extremely delayed or just not registering 
at all. Thankfully it's such a throwaway mode that I don't see people really dedicating themselves to it. There's also a tournament mode, as you would expect. The update also brought along a new challenge arena that unlocks after you beat the adventure mode. And there's also a lot more characters. Now originally some of these characters were either only in the adventure mode, and so at the time of the reviews, the critics would say, why are there so many characters in the adventure mode that you can't play as in free play mode? Then eventually Nintendo said, oh no, 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 you can play as them. You just have to win these tournaments. Well, now they decided that all these tournaments are stupid. So I booted up my game and I just had all of them. And I haven't even touched the online, so I guess Nintendo just didn't like their limited run strategy, but oh no. 2020 will certainly prove that wrong. And overall, I really like the character selection in Aces. It feels like one of the most diverse rosters we've had since Mario Tennis 64, and they even pulled in a few oddballs here and there, such as Fire Piranha Plant and Pauline. And while they don't have as much personality as the power shots in Mario Tennis Aces, it still is nice how many little touches they were able to put in there, such as Blooper being constantly soaking wet even when it isn't raining, or Pauline playing Jump Up Superstar when she does her um, when she does her power shot. Overall, it made it fun to experiment how many different characters I could cram into the matches, and each of them also had a slightly different play style to encourage experimentation. So with that, my overall thoughts on Mario Tennis Aces are, it's a, it's a good game, by no means is it terrible, but it's also very short, and there's not a whole lot of um, content to keep you coming for more and more and more. Now, would I recommend this over the other Mario Tennis Aces? Yes, especially because the energy shots really add an extra layer of strategy that Ultra Smash was really missing. The graphics are really gorgeous. The music is mostly forgettable, but that final battle tune is really cool. The controls work well, except when you're playing with the Joy-Con in true swing mode. And the character roster is nice and diverse. I would recommend waiting for this to go entirely on sale, or to rent it or get it as a Christmas present if you're going to check it out, because there are cheaper alternatives that'll get the job done. So with that, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, if I left anything else out, please let me know in the comment section. And until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, God bless, and if only real tennis pros could use these tennis tricks, because man, that would be way more interesting. Bye!